Hello. Hi. Adam's here. Yeah, I'm I'm up late. I figured I should. Uh, I was going to say it must uh, be say hello. <laughs> must be middle of the night. What time is it uh, where you are? O one o four. Oh my goodness! Well, it's nice to see you. Thanks for all your help on the forum. Sure. We're um, we're going slowly, but we're making progress nonetheless. Yeah. Well, I noticed you had some problems with the rank operator. I don't know if you're interested in some help with that. Oh, absolutely. You were, I think it was in the in session nine, you were trying to apply the rank operator on plus slash and couldn't make it work. And then, or as you expected, and then in, in the previous lesson, uh, you were trying to use it on equal to make it compare like match. Yeah, we we did get it to work in the last lesson, um, uh, which was nice. Although I realized afterwards, actually, uh, there's a perfectly good <clears throat> out of product version which works. Um, but yeah, uh, would love help with those things. What's the easiest thing to do? Uh, are you open well, to again, I can, the screen or? You, uh, I can do that, but would, you, I can also just explain something and you can try it out for yourself. Because um, the, the, it's a I concept. I think share screen would be good. I, I mean, yeah, why don't you share yours? Then? I, can, I, can, uh, I can share my screen, sure. Well, uh, I think also it's just good to watch somebody who knows what they're doing using APO <laughs> for a change. <laughs> okay, I don't usually use uh, Jupyter Notebook but that's fine. Can, Use whatever but you like. Everything yeah. is this is the same otherwise. So okay. Um actually let me I can do it here instead. While we're waiting Excellent. for Adam, I'll just mention we just for those who you didn't notice, we just released the course, course.fast.ai. So uh like literally 15 minutes ago. So I like first, having uh, first time in two years. Do I need to give you permission or anything? No, it works. Okay, great. Not nice rabbit images, Jeremy. Yeah, yeah thanks. I like the rabbits. It's now that now that computers can um, draw for us, I have no excuse not to add <laughs> artwork. My uh, my wife's an art teacher, and I've. Uh, Oh. Been showing her a few of the capabilities. What does she think? Oh, darling. Um, yeah, in, in, impressed, but but I guess like like it it blows my mind, but I I don't think she really gets it. Yeah, you know, it's it's um it's like you know. You see it in the movies all the time, you know. I <laughs> see, yes. <laughs> yeah, some people didn't realize computers couldn't do this before. Yeah. So, so what are we can looking you, at? Can you, see, you, can, you can see an, an empty blue screen, dark blue screen? Yes. Yes. Okay, just cl clean slate. Don't need any interface. Um, yeah, what, what is this? So, this is, uh, this is uh, the, the, the Windows This API is called... Or? No, this is, this is Ride, but it's okay. Ride in full screen mode with, with its toolbars and... and uh, everything turned off so that you can only Great. see the APL, nothing else. Nice. Um, so um, the and important you, thing to and understand- And when you do ride, you're, you're using the normal back tick approach to entering symbols? I, I personally don't. And I'm, I use hmm. uh, the right, right side alt key as a shifting oh, key. How do you set that up? Because I've always wanted that. There, I have created a, a actual like Microsoft type uh, keyboard layout. That you can oh. just install, and then you don't need any of dialogues. Okay. Things. Can you put that in the chat the, or something? Um, I'll, I'll do that afterwards. Thanks. Um, no problem. Uh, so the important thing to understand is uh, that um, rank, what is like, I don't know if you call it in Australia, but some of the countries call it blinkers or uh, call it blinders that you put in the in the head of a horse. Mm -hmm. Right? Yeah, blind, you know what blinders, I mean? These... Yeah, blinders is 
Who do? Yeah, yeah. so mm-hmm. you, you put you put something on the head of the horse so that it doesn't get distracted by things around. So it can only it narrows down its vision. Mm. That's the only thing that rank can do. Um, and that's important to understand. And that's why it was not working for you, not with plus slash, not with uh, with equal. So uh, so I'm creating an array here. This is mm-hmm. a, a two two layer three row uh, four column array. Mm-hmm. And um, the definition of plus slash is that it sums the rows. Mm-hmm. Okay. So now when I when I sum the rows, we, you saw this result before. So the first mm-hmm. result is one plus two plus three plus four. That's 10. And then five, six, seven, eight. Yeah. Again, so on. And well, nine, more so, generally, so it's, 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 it's summing over the last axis. It's summing the last axis, which is always the rows. Yeah. In any array, the last axis is the rows. Right. Okay. Um, and in this array, there are six rows. And slash three bar in each, in each always layer. sums over the first axis. The, the leading axis, yes, okay. the first axis. Now, what I can do with with uh, the rank operator is to give put blinders on uh, on this function. So right now, it's receiving as its argument the entire array A. When I say rank two, the only thing that it will ever see is arrays of rank two, even if the, the, the actual rank of the argument is higher. Mm-hmm. So what rank will do is saying, oh, this function is only allowed to see arrays of rank two. Let mm-hmm. me show it this array mm-hmm. of rank two. And when it's done processing that, let me show it this array. And then I'll collect together its results from those two applications mm-hmm. into a larger result. Now, mm-hmm. remember, plus slash sums the rows. Mm. So when it sees this row L array, it sums this row and it sums this row and it sums this row. Mm. Next time around, it sums this and this and this, which means the result is going to be entirely identical to what we had before. Mm. The, what's actually happening is that it's seeing less at a time, but that doesn't matter. Mm. The result is the same. And if we do rank one, is only allowed to ever see one row. So we'll sum this, and then rank mm. will let us sum this, and so on, and we get the same result. Mm. When you set rank zero, then rank knows, OK, this function is only ever allowed to see arrays of rank zero, that is, single elements. Mm. So it will tell it, OK, sum one, then yeah. sum two, which is why that gives us our array unmodified. Mm-hmm. Makes okay? sense. The difference with plus slash is plus slash does the uh, sorry sorry plus slash bar is that it looks at the whole array and treats it as a whole array. So it takes the entire first layer and adds it to the entire second layer mm. like that. Mm. Now, if you restrict the rank to rank two, it cannot see the entire array. The only thing it can see is this matrix because mm-hmm. rank is restricting its vision. So now it's going to instead, the leading axis now is, the, is down here along the row. So it's going to add this row to this row to this row. Yeah. Giving a result with four elements like that, which yeah. is why we get two times four elements. If I tell it rank one, then it will only ever be able to see one row at a time. So it will sum each row and that's equivalent to plus slash. Mm. So in general, when you have two symbols that are the same, but one has a bar on it, then if you give the one with a bar rank one, mm. it's equi- that's the same thing as removing the bar. Mm. And so we- is that why like, you often see more experienced APL programmers kind of using the bar version kind of by default because yes. it's like more flexible? Exactly. So now, if we if we try to use um, a function that computes the average, oops, oh, I'm sorry, let's do that again. And here's the function that computes the average. Right? Oh, sorry, tell we just learned tally, so like that. Okay. Now, if I try to apply this on a table instead, on a matrix, so um, we can we can use this one 
then obviously the average in each row should be two and five. But what's actually happening is that we get something that makes no sense at all. Why is that? Because tally counts how many major cells there are that is along the first axis. So it says there are two. But plus slash is summing along the rows. Mm. So we are summing three numbers and dividing by two. That is not an average. Mm. So at experienced APLs, they will use slash bar instead. This sums along the leading axis, and this counts along the leading axis, and this will give me one average per column. So the average of one and four is two and a half. Average of two and five is three and a half. Yep. That's why experienced APLs will use first axis functions, because then they can always say, okay, if I want, if I want the average over the rows, I'll restrict the view of oh. this function to the rows of this array. Mm. And now I get two and five. And I couldn't have done that if I had defined my function. I couldn't, it wouldn't be as flexible if I had defined my function in terms of last axis. Only by defining it in terms of first axis, I'm able to narrow down its vision to any lower level. Interesting. Is, is a way and, to think of that mnemonic with the slash bar is that like the bar is horizontal, so it, so it deals with rows. Is that like a yeah? That's that's how I think of it. At least it goes down the rows instead yeah. of going going along uh, the columns. And the, you have the same thing with this is reverse horizontal reverse, and this meaning last axis reverse, and this is uh, reversing it over the horizontal axis or rotating over or the flip, horizontal flip, axis. Right, or, or flip, flipping. Or yeah, either fl flipping or or horizontally uh, or flipping vertically. Yeah, exactly. So it, this shows the, the bar is shows the, isn't it? Yes, diagonal is transposed because it's flipping oh. over the diagonal. Wow, that's so yeah. awesome. <laughs> so um, the problem you had with you, you're trying to do uh, this thing or something like that, um, or we can we can take some numbers that it makes it a little bit easier to understand. So plus and all the arithmetic functions are so-called scalar functions. They actually have an implied rank zero, always. Mm -hmm. Meaning they're always so narrow-minded that they only look at individual elements and never consider the whole array. Mm -hmm. And there's nothing the, the rank operator can do to change that. Oh, so okay. as opposed to axis, which is an ad hoc syntax that actually looks at what function did you give it and does something special for it, the rank operator is entirely uh, general purpose. It has no idea about which function it's applying. I see. So equals it, bar could be used to behave like equals. But exactly. Like this, so. so exactly. So if we do this, now we're using match that only is allowed to look at scalars at a time. So it looks at three and three. It looks at four and looks at five in as pairs. And so we can use that to match anything. So match is the more general purpose function than equal, but equal is a very common construct. Oh. Uh, so that we have that a separate function for that. Um, and a good way to, to get a view of things in general, if you don't know what's going on in an expression, I think you did see this phrase yes, once, this Prince thing. So here's a really useful debugging trick. If I have a function, I don't know exactly what's going on. I'll wrap it in a defin, and I'll put in alpha and omega. And this is a new statement. I don't know if you've seen that. Yeah, we've seen before. that. What does that mean? Yeah. Um, and then I'll apply the function. So let's say, for example, that I'm using equal. Mm. So I'll put so I, the function will return the same result as the primitive function, mm. but it's wrapped in such a way that it prints mm. the arguments first. Yep. So now if we say uh, 3, 4, and 3, 5, we can see that the two, we should probably turn boxing on. Well, we don't actually need the max style, but oops. That, that didn't, oh, of course. I had to specify that even when functions are printing, I want it to be boxed. Um, so what equal is seeing is, is three, four, and also three, five. But it does its thing element by element. 
Now, if mm. I apply the rank operator, rank operator zero, print twice, will it? It will print twice. It'll be, oh, be called three, three and four, five. So this is a good way to see it. And, and you have already gone so advanced that you've created your own operators. Mm -hmm. So we can actually, we can actually create a trace operator. Um, oh. And we'll, it will print the arguments and then it will apply the function to the mm -hmm. arguments. So now we can say three, four equal TC three, five. And it prints that. Huh. Nice. And we can do it, and we can do it with with rank zero. Oops. And it prints it like this. Mm. Mm. We can even make it fancier and put labels inside and saying alpha is this and omega is this and so on. Mm. Um, you do need a different version for monadic, though, because there would be a value error on the alpha. Mm -hmm. So there's a trick that you haven't learned yet, which is to type this. Um, there's a special syntax in the def, and it means yeah, I've seen that. If, it means uh, apply. It means make make that if if you haven't passed an alpha, then yeah, it's, it's just default left argument. So the default left argument. This is a funny default left argument because the default left argument is an uh, is a function, mm. which otherwise you can't pass in, but it's a function which is a no up. It's an identity function, mm. and so here if if alpha is an identity function, then we just print omega, and over here. If alpha is an identity function, we apply alpha alpha monadically, and oh, then we I apply see. identity function to it, which doesn't do anything. I so see. this is a general purpose TC. So now I can take A we had before. Sorry, just to clarify can, it. Um, yeah. Is that setting alpha? It, it's not setting alpha to the identity function, right? It's setting alpha to the result of the identity function. No, it makes alpha B the identity function. Oh. Okay, because I thought... Because there's no argument to it, so it's just a function assignment. It's a tested function assignment. Oh, uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, okay, sorry. That makes perfect sense. It would be the same thing as, as writing this. Yeah, yeah, I get it. Mm. Okay, so um, we don't have to change that. So now, if we look at what plus slash is seeing, and that was our problem from the beginning, so here, we can see that it's seeing the entire array. It's a little bit hard to read, but here's the, our result. And this is the printout of the arguments. Mm -hmm. We can improve TC a little bit and say uh, alpha here. And omega. Omega. Oops, what did I do? Oh yes, of course, that's not gonna work. And alpha omega. This will work. Okay. So there's only an omega in this case. Um, and, and it's seeing the entire array and it's summing its rows. And when we try to apply this rank two, then we see it twice, but it's again being applied to this. It's exactly like applying plus slash to this this array for some of yep. these rows, right? Yep. And so on. So this is a really useful uh, operator. Mm. You can you can modify it to your heart's content. You can make it do whatever you want. Mm. And to, to write things, you can write a timestamp when it happened and so on. So I think, I mean, I can take questions, but I think it should be more clear now what the rank operator does. It's just blinders. That's all it does. This was really helpful. Thank you, Adam. So, and this is what happened then with um, when we had um, we compare these, um, then we you did the outer product like this. Mm -hmm. Now, outer product is comparing all the elements on one side to all the elements on the other side, all the different combinations. Yep. We can write this just with equal and rank. Yeah, that's because, what we did yesterday. Yeah, so so again, this is um, every element, every zero on the left, rank zero on the left gets compared to every element on the right. So yeah, I, know you, I know you did this, but there's a point here. Sure. So it gives us the same result. But what is equal actually seeing? Outer product applies between all combinations of left and right elements. 
That's not what's happening here. It's what you thought was happening here. Because if you put TC in, you'll see that it's only being called with a scalar on the left and a vector on the right, because that's exactly what we asked for. Scalar mm -hmm. on the left, vector on the right. If we instead do jot dot equal trace like this, you can see that it's being called individually on every pair. Mm. So the full way of behaving like the um, like the outer product is to say, I want equal to only ever see arguments of rank zero on one side and zero on the other side. And there's a, you're allowed to omit one if they're the same. And that function, which only uh, looks at rank zero things should be applied between scalars on the left and vectors on the right. So I'm using rank twice. Oh, wow. Hang on. Okay. To understand that. so so everything okay, binds we read from left, the left to right when we do operators operators right? okay yeah or you could say the operators have a long left scope so this operator takes the entire thing here operator phrase on the left function phrase on the left um so this is saying this function can only ever see scalars and with that apply it between scalars on the left and vectors on the right no, I don't get so, it. So if you're saying to apply it to vectors on the right, but you previously said it only you can ever apply to scalars, what does that mean? Yeah, so it's not, remember, um, rank is not modifying the function. Mm -hmm. Rank is calling the function one or more times as necessary, such that the function will have a restricted view. Yes. So this function over here will be called with left arguments that are scalars and right arguments that are vectors. We can see that by putting in CC. Oh. Right? However, this function it itself is a derived function. It is not a normal equal. It's an equal. It's, it's a function that uses equal, but only ever lets equal experience a scalar on the left and a scalar on the right. Mm -hmm. And how do we know that? Well, we can look at with CC. <laughs> so now we can see that this equal is being called like that one mm. element at a time on the left and on the right. We could also mm. put in a double TC, but it will be uh, very verbose. <laughs> and also when, yeah, so so we can see first, let's go up all the way here. So we can see the, the outer TC reported, I'm calling my operand with a scalar and a vector. And the inner TC, the left one, saying I'm seeing, I'm calling my operand with an, a scalar and a scalar. So actually, in some ways, it makes sense to think about that composition train right to left in the sense that the right hand um, jot diuresis is taking the whole left hand function. Yes. Um, so the kind of the implied loop is that left-hand side is kind of the inner of the applied loop in a sense. Yes, and this is the governor. Or, this is the one, oops. Or, or do you read it right to left until you hit the operator and then you jump to the far left and read that? I mean, the, the, the parsing goes left to right, yeah. but the point is that the right-hand jot diuresis has the entire left-hand derived function as the thing that it's applying that rank to. I find it a little bit dangerous to speak about APL in terms of right to left, left to right. It's a, it. um, it's kind of like a scaffold for letting people know how simple function application works in APL, but it doesn't really apply when you have a full the full APL syntax, including operators and stranding and so on. Really, the the way you should think of it is in terms of binding strength. Mm. What binds stronger? And then that operators bind stronger than to their neighboring tokens than uh, functions do. And then when you have equal binding strength, then operators go from the left stronger. So they have a long left scope. Mm. And operators left operand will be as far to the left as it can possibly reach without switching type. Mm. It, it can only take either a function or an array. So when parsing this, we can look at this as, okay, this operator, what does it take as its left operand? Well, here we have an operator, a monadic operator. 
that can it can't be just that because it can't take a magnetic operator as upper end. So we have to mm. keep going left. Maybe this is the upper end of TC. Oh, further left. No, nope, there's a dyadic operator. It's going to grab the zero from TC. And it takes us this left upper end. Oh, no, another left, uh, another um, operator on the left. So it has to have an upper end. Keep going here. And there's a parenthesis. Stop. We can't go any further. So we stop here. Mm. Mm. Or you could look the other way around. This equal. Is it being applied now? Nope. It's being grabbed by an operator on the right. Is this being applied? Nope. It's being applied. It's being grabbed by an operator on its right. Okay. Mm. So here's the right upper end. Are we ready to apply? Nope. There's an operator on the right grabbing me. Is this ready? No, there's another operator. Okay. And then finally the right upper end and there's a parenthesis, we can't go any further. Mm. So it, it doesn't matter which way you go. As long as you know the binding strength rules, you just go one token ahead and see, are we done yet? And if, and if, if the binding rules say, no, we're not done yet, then you keep going. And related to this, Adam, I, I found it very insightful listening to you on a a Raycast episode talking about why why you tend to avoid parentheses, which is not because you're trying to type less characters, but because it's a similar idea that you were saying there's less to keep in your head at once if you can yes. just work, you know, in the natural direction and only have to keep one thing in your head at a time. Right. And it doesn't really matter. You can read the APL right to left or left to right. It's just a matter of reading it. So, so the way I would read this from left to right, and actually I would avoid this parenthesis, I do need to separate this array from this array, mm. but I can do that with an identity function because this operand here has to stop here. We're switching to a new token here. It can't grab far, further okay, to the right. Okay, so that identity function, so uh, that's, uh, what's that called again? Right something, right? It's called, I mean, the official right name tech. is the same, right, right but tech, right, right tech is the symbol, yeah. Yeah, and, and so that uh, function uh, in a dyadic context returns its right-hand side and in a monadic context returns well, it's, it returns its right-hand right side. It's right-hand side. Um, <laughs> that's, it, I like to call it right because it returns whatever's on the right. Right. And so that function's not doing anything, except as I parse that now, I basically can see that I've got a function being applied to an array. And therefore, I'm, yeah, that's, that's a, a unit of stuff that APO can then. So execute. you can read this from, from so I would, normally I would read APO, if, at least if the expressions are short enough, from mm -hmm. left to right. Interesting. Because it's ex executed from right to left, we can read it from uh, left to right. And I will make a crazy claim here that English is written and read from left to right, and it executes from right to left. I'll come mm -hmm. back to that. Um, so this is A, B, C, D equal on scalars, on scalars and vectors to A, B, D, C, B, A, B, C, A. Mm -hmm. It reads naturally from left to right. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I know Go, what you mean. It's like when you see like, you know, three uh, divide tilde diuresis something. You can start reading it as like three divided into, and then you can start. Yeah, or you divides. Know, you see that expression, divides. Yeah. To make it yeah, three, three divides five. Um, English is is executed from right to left. Go drive the big red. You still have no idea what I'm saying. Mm. Bus. Okay, so first you have to evaluate bus. Right? Then you have to make it red. Then you have to make it big. Then you have to talk about the concept of driving it. Then you have to go do that. Mm. Go drive the big red bus. Insightful, yeah. In fact, normal function syntax in other programming languages is also from right to left, even though everybody thinks it's from left to right. Because if I write f yeah, of that's g of h of x, you have to evaluate x first in, before you evaluate h, before you evaluate g, before you f. So you write it and read it from right. left to right, but Although you evaluate a lot of it from right to left. People nowadays are moving towards 
the syntax where you kind of the draw some kind of, X. well, or maybe this, in functional yeah. kind of a, a, a right arrow kind of cliff or something. Yeah, like a pipe that. pipe type thing. Yeah. yeah, that's true. Yeah, but anyway, I didn't enough about that. So I hope this clarifies matters a bit. Yeah, it's great. No, Did I've used up half, any... half of your time. I'm sorry. No, I'm thrilled. No. <laughs> Does uh, anybody have any questions in. about anything? Um, well, Adam might want to go to sleep. sleep. <laughs> Both watch the um, uh, watch the previous ones and then and then join in. This is great. I, I I guess I have a more general question, Adam, which is: Do you, do you have any thoughts about? Um, I mean, I I want us to finish all the glyphs, right? Which hopefully won't take too much longer. Um, but when we do, I think the next step will be to learn to write APL properly and also understand why, like what why is what proper is proper. Um, so things like this uh, use bar version of glyphs because they're more flexible thing is like a pretty key insight. Is there like videos or books or anything like that for getting these kinds of insights? Um, the art of APL. <laughs> um, APL style. I don't, there are some tips and tricks. I, in general, APL isn't very uh, opinionated about how you should write things. In fact, I think dialogue is kind of proud of language being a um, multi-paradigm language. You can write in a functional style. You don't have to. You can write in the object-oriented style if you want to, but you don't have to. You can write tacit or you can write non-tacit, whichever way you want. However, if you want uh, good performance, for example, then there's some things you should, should stick to. If you want more flexibility, so your your functions are generally more applicable, then there's some things you can stick to. I would but say for what we're doing, things. I would say for what we're doing, more flexibility is probably what we're aiming for. Because I think like at this study group, I kind of positioned it as like learning about a flexible and expressive notation, which might help us to think about problem, you know, problems that we're solving and so, but there, there's not enough, I think, to write in order to make a paper of it. It's like a couple of lines of, of tips and like this, make yeah, your functions like uh, leading axis oriented so that then they're more flexible. You can apply them. You can always make them later axis oriented by using the rank operator and, uh, and keep your codes flat. And, you can do arrays of Flat, arrays. Meaning less parentheses. No, and when it, the algorithms should use uh, arrays that are not nested. Okay. So we can have these arrays of arrays. You haven't used a whole lot of them. No. But and but the opposite is called simple arrays or flat arrays, and they are. I've heard some people call it. They're more sympathetic to the hardware. Right. So uh, the computer is really, really good at arrays because it's just actually- Just to clarify, a... Adam, I, if I remember correctly, okay, yeah, no, I remember. So J doesn't exactly let you have arrays of arrays. You have to explicitly box them and then- The difference is very little. It's almost more- K, K does, it's more focused on arrays of arrays, if I remember. Yeah, K doesn't correctly. allow you multidimensional arrays. It only allows lists of lists of lists and there's no other way. Mm. And then it has to, there are some choices that we made in design, you know, to avoid that because it doesn't allow multidimensional arrays. Yeah. Um, in, in PyTorch and such things, we, we think about these issues a lot because um, you really, like it really kills you on the GPU if you're, um, you know, doing something across anything other than the trailing axis, it'll still work, but it'll be, you know, doing a, a non-unit ah. stride. So, and yeah, exactly. But it's not so just a stride. That's, you have a stride if your array is actually represented flat in memory. 
in yes, contiguous which, memory. Which, which it is but in if, PyTorch, yeah. Sure, but if you have nested arrays, it's, it's not worse. contiguous at all. Correct. It's not even a stride. It's, so then you now have to it has do to pointer follow chasing. pointers. Exactly. And that is going to kill performance. Yeah. And not only performance, but actually in today's computers are so fast that the bottleneck is often memory throughput. The, the RAM Correct. cannot feed problems to the uh, to the processor fast enough. The processor is just sitting there waiting for the RAM to deliver right. more work. So we actually, this is actually and, a very current issue in the deep learning world because as of a year or two ago, a lot of papers were written that would write about the flops that their algorithm would require. And nobody, not nobody, but a lot of people writing these uh, papers hadn't quite noticed that there was very little correlation between flops and time because yeah. of the memory issue. Now, PyTorch doesn't let you have tensors of tensors, so it's less of a problem. But yeah, it, it does turn out that memory acts, memory is probably the more important issue in deep learning algorithms at the moment. And so, so, so here's, here's one more trick to use in APL, at least. Use Boolean masks mm. as much as you can. And, and that is because Again, the RAM is the issue. That's the bottleneck. And so in other words, APL, instead of conditionals. Well, not just instead of conditionals, but instead of integers, if you can. Instead of using indices and things, then you should use a mask for the whole thing. I and see. the reason for that is, and, and store data as Boolean instead so sorry, of- I just want to as, make sure I'm on the same wavelength. So you're saying instead of like having an array that says like, get indices two, three, and five, you would have a mask array of zeros in which items two, three, and five have a one in that location. Exactly. Mm -hmm. um, and, and then if you, let's, let's say for example, uh, you need to combine two conditions and you know that uh, elements one, two, and five abide by these conditions and you, and then the, by one condition, you have another condition for which elements a uh, two, five, a uh, four, and five uh, hold the condition. So you could do the intersection of the two sets by multiplying to get the, the indices. Well, not multiply, they're just numbers, right? They're just oh, sorry, indices. intersection. So, if you, uh, do, so you do the intersection of them as sets, and then those are the ones that where the condition holds for both, and then you could index things. However, if you had them as Boolean masks instead, so it would be it's whatever, uh, zero, one, uh, zero, one. Uh, something like that, and one of them, and so on. Then you can just do an and, a Boolean and, and that gives you a new mask. Right. And doing a Boolean and operation on binary data in the processor is enormously much faster than doing a set intersection. That's what I meant about multiply. So you could yeah. Okay, Boolean, yeah, so that comes right. Yes, them. yeah, exactly. Um, and then there's another benefit of this is the APL will aggressively squeeze arrays. And Boolean arrays are stored as one bit Booleans. Oh, really? That, that means that you can store eight elements in a single byte. Wait, how, how does that work? Because it's not like typed per it's se. So if it, it would just notice that the highest is one yeah. and the lowest is zero. And if yes. I then try to store a two in it, it'll all have to reallocate the whole thing or something. Yes, yes, it will. Ah. Um, and that, but that means since the processor is waiting for the data, and we're able to switch to a to an eighth of the data size. That means that the transfer time, which is the important time, is going to be an eighth, and that gives you enormous speed ups. And so we have all these very clever algorithms built into the interpreter, um, algorithms that are difficult to develop. It can take decades to write the C codes for that. C code for that, um, and it can give you a, a speed up. Like that. So basically, by using APL that is optimized like this, you are you are employing C, uh, clever C programmers that have been working for you for years to fine tune your program right. way before you even started writing your program. So, so these are I I can't I don't even think I can think of more of more things that of good principles than and. Uh, than that. Okay, that I mean that's very. You very use helpful. boolean masks. Keep keep your arrays and uh, flat. Um, and what was the first thing I said before? Um, uh, use leading, the, uh, the and first and first axis, yeah, Le and leading axis and things. And so, what 
so for I, was to... uh, and then oh, yeah. I mean the general uh, programming principles you don't do uh, global state changes and stuff like that. Global yeah, so, variables are really bad idea. So one thing we, yeah, so I think I think we're pretty familiar as a community with the more general software engineering principles. One thing that surprised me when we were learning about each was that it didn't operate over kind of major cells, but instead it operated over ah, like, yes, you know, sub arrays. And I guess the, that, but what now that we know about rank, we, we can just use rank for anything where we want to go over ma major cells, which means maybe each is not so useful anymore. So each right? is actually really, really simple. Um, I can I can show you if you want. I can What's explain what is happening with each. Um, so, okay. And like I said, just in general, that like each each is a thing that you would use, and you know, is a normal. I, I use it occasionally, day. but it it depends what it is I'm doing. Um, mm -hmm. I'll try to avoid it as much as possible. And oh, among APL programmers, because it's an explicit loop. And that means mm -hmm. the, interpre uh, the interpreter has no choice but to loop. Mm. And we don't want loops. We want to do array operations because the, the processors now have array uh, instructions. They can and do it. In fact, are not ex and rank operator doesn't create explicit loops. Rank operator can... conceptually loops, but mm -hmm. internally, if it can avoid it, it will not loop. So it and knows about do a lot of things. Stuff if it can. Exactly. And... Exactly. Mm -hmm. uh, so, so, that, so, that would, so that would be good to have a little section in, in the ninth book there, Jeremy, where we might like say, this is an explicit loop and this is the less explicit way to do it. Like, Well, yeah, I mean, there's a different is... notebook, I think, Ben, like, yep. I, well, you know, we've got to think about how to present all this, but I think, you know, there's a notebook, the, the theory of this first notebook or set of notebooks is literally, you know, a Learn dictionary symbols, of please. APL glyphs in an order where you never get a definition in terms of something you haven't learned yet, you yep. know? And then there's something later about like, okay, what, what do you do with it? <laughs> cool, yeah, yeah. So, so um, right, so if you use the rank operator to loop, then you might keep the performance because it doesn't actually loop. It uses mm -hmm. fancy instructions and for that instead. Each doesn't have much of a choice, although occasionally the interpreter is clever enough. If you try to use plus each, it will not actually loop because it knows how to just circuit that and, and mm -hmm. just do it directly. Um, but what's happening with, with each is it's, it's, you think of the matrix and you want to loop over each row, but really what each is, is very, very simple. So if you have F each, that's the same thing as, and now, you, now that you've learned enough of these compositional operators, you learned the top. It's the enclose, which I don't remember. We haven't done enclose, but you can tell yeah, us quickly enclose. what it is. Yeah, it's it's basically just wrapping an array up as a single element, as a scalar. So it's it's, it's adding it's, a leading axis. Oh, it's not adding a leading axis. Not adding it's an axis. It's creating a scalar. It's, a point, it's creating a pointer to it. You can think of it like that. What type is um, that? Is that some new type we haven't learned yet? Like it's literally well, like a, it's an enclosed an enclosed item. Like there aren't not, really types in scalar APL. numeric. Well, it's not numeric scalar. It's not a, and it's not a no, character it's, scalar. It's a it's pointer a, type. Okay. Reference. And, but it doesn't, it's not a reference. No. Okay. Because APL is passed by value. And so it will do, it will not keep connections between things that you assign across. But it, internally, it's actually a pointer. And that's pretty much how you can think of it. But you, it's an enclosure, it's a scalar. Mm. Um, and so what it is, is enclose. Uh, a top F over this close. And uh, this close is exactly the opposite. It means follow the pointer. Go go get one element and open it up. Rank zero. Um, I'm just trying to remember. So the um, jot diuresis. This being... is preprocess both arguments. Mm -hmm. Yes. If, but if there's only one argument, remember, then it's the same thing as on the top. I do remember, yeah. So that's that's why it's useful to have it do that. So this means actually pre-process all arguments, whether there's one or two. We just pre-process them with this close. So we open up a box. Uh, hang on a tick, Adam. You've got um oh no, you don't have a fork. These are operators, not functions. Okay, so this yes. is um so here you've got 
function operator function operator function operator array okay so this whole thing is monadic because there's a thing only on the right and then um, wait wait what what are you saying there's the this is not the, this, is not this whole thing is one giant function the function is ambivalent we call it it's both monadic and dyadic Oh, how is um, this a function? I thought the zero on the right hand. Oh no, the zero the is the right hand here. side of the operator. Yeah. Yeah. So this says. So what it's saying is, on every scalar element, and mm -hmm. loop as much as necessary to address scalar elements. Okay, this is bind. On both you've got here on right? both sides, not bind. This is rank. Oh, this okay. Is rank. Yes, of course, that's rank. So this says, on scalars. So we already we already dug. The first thing we do is dig all the way down to the scalars. Mm -hmm. That means there's nothing you can do to each to make it apply to rows. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. It's already impossible. It's like it's like equal or or plus. It's already down at the scalar level. On the scalars, yeah. Sorry. So it never sees the row. Yeah, it never sees a row. It never sees any. F will never see anything that comes from more than a single element. So on the single elements, yeah. And remember, zero. this zero actually means zero zero zero. Because it, it what it yes. means is zero, it's rank zero monadically, it's rank zero and left, and it's rank zero right. So it's always mm -hmm. rank zero. Mm -hmm. Then on those elements, open them up if they are nested. If they're not nested, like just a simple array, then nothing happens. Apply F and package the results back into the box. Oh yeah, because the um, when you've got multiple composition. It goes right to left. This, is that what you're saying? It's yeah, you could you could the binding goes like that. So we're saying so this this is F post processed by enclosing the result. Mm -hmm. And pre processed by disclosing the result. Oh. Okay. okay. So we can show you have actually used nested arrays that have an implied enclose already. So and what we can say as an example, A B C D E F. This is a nested array. Mm -hmm. This is exactly the same thing as the enclose of ABC concatenated with the enclose of DEF. The stranding syntax is just a nicety. It's syntactic sugar. It means this. Okay. It just enclose all the elements that are being stranded together. Okay. So, so conceptually, these are, well, no, they are, they are scalars. Because every vector consists of scalars, and every matrix consists of rows that have scalars in them, elements in them, and so this is an. Uh, and maybe we should turn boxing up to why max is, now. Why is that not just an array of arrays where the first array is A B C and the second array is D E F? Well, it you... is. Okay, so it's, why do you need that enclose but, idea? Because if I didn't have enclose here. Then oh, we would just be concatenating together these. Yes. Yeah. So we need to say each uh, each three element vector lives in its own little scalar. Mm. And so okay. these are in individual are scalars. If we look at the at the shape of this, it's the empty vector. It's a scalar. Yep. If we look at the depth of it, it's depth two. There's an outer array which is a scalar, and there's an inner array which is a vector. Yep. So the yep. two levels. Yep. And so this is what we have. Right? This is exactly the same thing as ABC, DEF. And now it's easier to understand when I do reverse each on these. Mm -hmm. What was actually happening here is I started off by applying on, so you can make our little, uh, we can write this TC each. So we can see that TC is first seeing ABC, then seeing DEF. Ah, yeah. hold on. So if TC is seeing ABC, then firstly, T, uh, well, TC, if, if the reverse is seeing ABC, that means not it was only applied to the first element. Mm -hmm. That's the rank zero. But it wasn't, it didn't see the enclosure. So we have disclosed it. We've opened it up. Hmm. And what did that? Well, because remember the definition of of each. Mm. So in this case, it's the enclosing, oops, enclosing at top, the disclosing, 
rank zero. Oh, right. Right? This is what each means. Huh. That's the definition of each. If we didn't do the disclosing, if you just do this right, uh, reverse running zero, then we are reversing each scalar, but reversing a scalar doesn't do anything. Mm -hmm. If we only pre-process it by opening them up, then we would get a matrix because we're having the results from this are, is a vector. Oh, yeah. So two yeah. vectors in an array makes a matrix. Mm. So to stick them back into their boxes where they came from, we post-process the result of reverse. And this is the definition of each. And that's why you cannot use a function that has an each after it to, ex to access entire rows of a matrix. It's just right. not possible. Right. However, if we take three, four, reshape IOTA and IOTA 12, and we want to reverse each row, well, yeah, firstly, now you can use rank. Does it, you can, firstly, this function anyway is rank, uh, rank one. Remember? If this function is the leading axis one, mm -hmm. then the corresponding function is the, rank, the same thing, rank one. So this reverses the first axis, and this reverses uh, the last axis. It right? makes it, it flips it horizontally. Mm -hmm. And if we use the first axis one with rank one, then we're flipping uh, the the rows because there's only one axis in them. We're only yeah. ever seeing one of these. Um, so how could we use uh, reverse each to reverse the rows? Or for that sake, reverse first each. Well, if we know that each will open up these boxes and close them down again. So if we give it boxes that they can apply on, then it will work. So if I enclose rank one, so mm. enclose, remember, puts a box around things. If I just enclose the array, we get a, a multiple yeah. enclosed. We can keep making beautiful patterns like mm -hmm. this. Uh, if I enclose rank one, then I took each row and made it into a scalar. That means we have a collection of three scalars that's called a right. vector, a nested vector. Now I can reverse each. Isn't there a arrow that does the same thing? Like yes, uh, for matrices there is a down arrow, but it's not really necessary. Okay. <laughs> it does exactly the same thing on matrices, but it doesn't do the same thing on higher rank arrays, so it, it's more general. Okay. In a sense, this is itself is a last axis function, and whereas enclose is a is a leading axis function, it does, works on everything, oh. and you can restrict it to be on the lower rank. Oh, I see. So you can think of down arrow and enclose as the leading and trailing axis versions of the same thing. Yeah, you could. Yeah. Um, Pretty they don't look similar. So they don't look similar, but that's this because enclose with a yeah. bar would look like a epsilon or something. Or <laughs> well, subset. they would look like this, oh, but that means something that? else. Oh, okay. Yeah, yeah, you haven't learned it yet. You'll see. No. I don't give it a spo spoil at all. Um, no. But it's, uh, there's never any reason really to use a down arrow. It's just confusing mm. when higher rank arrays. It's much easier conceptually to understand that this puts things into boxes and yeah. it gets restricted to only see rows. So it puts the rows into boxes. And then we can we can disclose. Uh, if we, The problem is we need to disclose each of these. Right? So we need to disclose rank zero. Right? The elements are are of the vector. This vector has mm -hmm. three elements. And I want to open up each one of them because it's confined to a box. Then we get our matrix back. Mm. So this is exactly the process. But notice here, I'm enclosing only to applying each so that I can again disclose. Well, that's the inverse operations of what each actually implies. Because this each is actually uh, over mm -hmm. this close, rank zero, and then enclose on top of that, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. So these negate each other. This mm -hmm. makes scalars 
that are enclosed and this opens scalars that are enclosed yeah. and this encloses the results and this discloses the results mm. so these two cancel each other out and these two cancel each other out and the only thing we have left is this rank huh. one which it already is and we're right back so we could only apply that it. you come full circle that's great this is why you cannot use each on rows, but you can use rank on rows. So awesome. And the interpreter is clever enough that if you if you write reverse rank one, oops, rank one, it won't loop. It will understand that it needs to reverse the rows, and it will do that uh, in a, as fast as it can do that with vector instructions in memory. Mm. I don't know if you can actually speed anything up here, but we will try. Wow, it's nice to um, learn APL from somebody who understands it. <laughs> Thanks, Adam. Uh, uh, we should let you I've get back to sleep. No, not get back to get to sleep, and and that's actually that's our hour. So that's actually fantastic. That's awesome. I feel a little bit bad about the uh, about hijacking your whole thing, but uh, oh, we'd be happy to hi have you hijack all the whole things. It's great, thank you. Yeah, no, it was it's it's great that you're you know spending the time to watch them all. It was great that you joined. This was very much really so. helpful for me. So yeah, well, you're welcome. I mean, I yeah. I enjoy also seeing seeing your explorations and and it. Uh, it gives me some some feedback on where we can improve our <laughs> our documentation. Must be a bit cringy though to hear CS being like, oh, "What are we doing?" And you must be just press that button, Jeremy, for God's sake. <laughs> it's, there's been a couple of times where I kind of wish I was there. So if you could, but if you could hear it, I'll, I'll let you explore, right? And if it, often you figure it, almost always you figure it out eventually. And somebody too. jumps in and says, "Hey, try this." <laughs> and, but was what I was worried about a little bit here is you seem to be going down a wrong conceptual path with regards to to rank. Yes. Where you think it seemed like you were thinking that rank actually modifies the the uh, the function just like the bracket axis modifies the function, mm. and that isn't the case. Mm. So, got it. Well, it is nice to know that if we go too far off the deep end, you'll uh, you'll come tell us. <laughs> yeah, then I'll much. come and yell at you. <laughs> Uh, yeah, you'll keep, you'll, I'll have sleepless nights if you go too far off the right path. So. Well, Excellent. I'm we, glad to hear that. If we see you join the call at the beginning, we're like, oh, we <laughs> I know that we strayed. <laughs> yeah, Our shepherd exactly. is back. <laughs> all right. Thanks, all. Otherwise, if, feel feel free to ask me questions. I mean, I'll, awesome. I'll respond on the forums. We will. Bye. Thanks, Bye. Thanks. Thanks. Bye. 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 Bye.